Hi, my name is Paige Piccinini. I'm a data scientist, and I'll be your instructor for this course on A-B testing in R. A-B testing is a powerful way to try out a new design or program changes before making final decisions. In this course, we'll go over the fundamentals of A-B testing so you can get started on building and analyzing your own A-B experiments. Before getting into A-B testing, let's talk about what it is and why it's useful for you. A-B testing is a framework for you to test different ideas for how to improve upon an existing design, often a website. With A-B testing, you're able to take a set of new ideas, test them with a new experiment, statistically analyze the results to confidently say which idea is better, update your website or app to use the winning idea, and then continue the cycle over again. What's key to remember is A-B testing is not something you do just once. You want to be constantly updating your website or app to maximize things like conversion rates or usage time. With A-B testing, you will always be making minor updates to push those numbers up. While A-B testing is often discussed in the context of websites and tech, really it can be used in any context where you have a question you want to test and then make updates accordingly. A-B testing is just experimental design. You could A-B test two different fertilizer types in your garden, or secretly test two coffee brands at work to see which people like more. The world is your A-B testing playground. In chapter three, I'll go over more example uses of A-B testing. Now, let's walk through a simplified set of steps with a hypothetical experiment. In future chapters, we'll see how A-B testing can be more complicated than our hypothetical example here. We'll be covering A-B testing concepts in more depth in chapters three and four. Let's say you run a cat adoption website. Right now, your homepage looks like this. You want to know if a different homepage picture would result in more visitors clicking the Adopt Today button. This is also referred to as conversion rate. If someone clicks, you say they converted. The conversion rate is generally the number of people who did an action, for example, clicked a button, divided by the number of people who went to the page. In our case, to test this, you need two conditions. One, a control, your current photo, and two, a test, a new photo. For your test photo, you decide to use this photo. Your hypothesis is that seeing a cat in a hat will make people more likely to want to adopt. Let's go over the variables that you know. You have your question, will changing the home paid photo result in more adopt a day clicks? And your hypothesis, using a photo of a cat wearing a hat will result in more adopt a day clicks. You also have your, in, your dependent variable, whether a person clicked the adopt today button or not, and your independent variable, the homepage photo, either the control photo, no hat, or the test photo, hat. By building up from question to independent variable, we know exactly what we're asking, and we can already see the shape of our experiment for how to answer our question. Before we start building our experiment, we want to know what our conversion rates look like before changing anything. Let's take a quick look at that data set. Here I'm using the suite of packages called the Tidyverse. It should be familiar to you from DataCamp's course in the Tidyverse. From the Tidyverse, we use the function readCSV from the reader package to load our data. Here, click data. If we look at the first few rows, we see that we have two columns. One, visit date, which gives the day when someone visited the website, and two, click to adopt today, which is a one if someone clicked on the button and a zero if they didn't. Okay, now that we have the basic motivations of A-B testing, let's practice what we've learned and take another look at our preliminary